Okay, if you've gotten to this video, that means that you should have finished everything from the packet so far. You went through data, notes, examples, um, and you went through the page two and page three video if you needed to. If you need to check your answers, go back and watch that one as well. Okay, so at this point, you should feel comfortable finding the mean, median, mode, range, max, min, IQR, Q1, Q3, all of those things from your calculator. Okay, today, once we know how to find all that stuff, we're going to put those numbers into action. Okay, so today's topic is box plots, otherwise known as a box and whisker plot. Okay, and so we're going to use the five number summary to find the box and whisker plot. The other thing we're going to talk about today is outliers. So the five number summary includes the min, Q1, median, Q3, and the max. Okay, IQR stands for interquartile range and you find it by doing Q3 minus Q1. Now an outlier is a number that is outside the upper and lower boundary. Okay, there's two formulas that you have to memorize for outliers. The lower boundary is found by doing Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR and the upper boundary is found by doing Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. Okay, and then we will describe what exactly you're supposed to do with that once we get there. Now, today I'm going to use the smaller calculator just to in case people have that one and not the other one. So I'm going to use the smaller calculator today. If you're following along with the bigger calculator, you should know how to use that because you used it yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to hit the data button because in this calculator, use the data button. If you want to clear, you hit data again and you clear it out. Okay, so a few comments off to the side with the little calculator. Okay, you hit data twice to clear. Okay. If you want to put your stuff in, you put data and then your list is empty. Okay. If you want to calculate something, you're going to say second data and you're going to pick one var stat, just like you do on the big calculator. Okay. So I'll do one example with the small and one example with the big. So I'm going to start by using my list of numbers. Here we go. They're up here. I'm going to put these in 7, enter, 19, enter, 25, enter, 9, enter, 10, enter, 17, 23, and 23. Okay, I go back and check the numbers to make sure I didn't miss any. Remember that you don't have to put them in order from smallest to biggest. Okay, on this calculator, I'm going to hit second, data, I'm going to hit one var stat. Okay. My data is an L1 and my frequency is 1 because I only want it to count the list once. So I'm going to hit enter. And then here I got my numbers. Remember that X bar is the mean. SX is the standard deviation. Min, Q1, median, Q3, max. Okay, so that's where I'm going to focus my attention today. So my min. 7, Q1, 9.5, median, 18, Q3, 23, max is 25, okay? Now my range would be my max minus my min, which is 25 minus 7, which is 18, and my IQR is 23 minus 9.5, which is 13.5. Now, in order to find the outliers, we have to find the lower boundary and the upper boundary, okay? Now, any number that falls outside of those two numbers would be an outlier, okay? Now, with my freshmen, they really like just to look at the numbers and decide which one seems too big or too small. Please don't do that. If you want to decide that something's an outlier, you have to prove it by saying that it's bigger than the upper or smaller than the lower boundaries. So. Plugging things in, my Q1 would be 9.5 minus 1.5 times my IQR. 
my Q3 is 23 plus 1.5 times my IQR. Okay, the way that you can remember this is you use the lower boundary and you subtract. You use the upper boundary and you add. Okay, that's kind of the only difference between the two formulas. So if I plug this in, 9.5 minus 1.5 times IQR and 23 plus 1.5 times IQR. Okay, so my two numbers are, oops, negative 10.75 and 43.25. Okay, now what it's describing is it's creating a barrier. So it's saying that all numbers from my original list that I plugged into my table, okay, into my calculator, all of those numbers must be in between these two boundaries. So if there's any number that's smaller or any number that's bigger that falls outside of the two boundaries, then it's an outlier. Now, all of these numbers are in between negative 10.75 and 43.25, so we have no outliers because everything is in between my boundaries. Lastly, I'm going to create a box plot. Now, when you create a box plot, you need a nice number line down here, okay? When you create your number line, think about what your minimum and your maximum is. So the smallest number on my box plot needs to be a 7, and the biggest number needs to be close to 25. So I can either count by 1s or count by 2s or count by 5s, depending on how big of a range I have. I'm going to see if I can get away with counting by 1s. Okay, I think I can do that with the numbers that I created. So, I'm going to start at 7. You don't have to start at 0. You can start just near your minimum. And then just make sure that you count up and you end near your maximum. Okay, it doesn't have to be exactly on your min and exactly on your max. This one counts to 26. Just make sure that your numbers are well spaced out. Then, you're going to put a dot for every number in your five number summary. So, I've got a dot at 7. 9.5, 18, 23, and 25. Okay, this is how you create your box plot. You connect your outer two, and then you create a box around your middle three. And you put a line down the center. Okay, every single time you have a box plot, you automatically should be able to tell me the minimum, the Q1, median, the Q3, and the max, because those are the five points on your box and whisker plot. Nowhere on your box and whisker plot does it have the actual numbers from here unless they are one of my five number summary numbers. So every single time you have a box plot, you're going to graph the min, the Q1, the median, the Q3, and the max. Okay, so we're going to do that all over again a second time, and then you're going to try it by yourself. Okay, start by putting the numbers in your calculator. This time I'm going to use the big calculator. Okay, I go to stat, I hit edit, and I have to clear L1. 7, 11, 19, 3, 13, 10, 13, and 80. Okay, let me make sure I didn't mess up any of those. Okay, stat, calc, one variable stat. I got all my numbers in list one. I have no frequency list, so I'm going to calculate. Okay, I'm going to go down to the min because that's what matters this time around. We've got 3, 8.5, 12, 12. Handwriting's beautiful. We've got 16 and we've got 80. Now, my range is going to be 77 and my IQR is going to be 16 minus 8.5, 7.5. Okay. So, first I'm going to make my box and whisker plot. Now, I'm going to have a lot more numbers on here because I go from 3 to 80. So, I'm going to count by. Okay, I counted by fives, and my 
numbers are a little far apart, so I'm going to have to go back and add a few lines. Okay, you want them to be pretty evenly spaced, but I get it, human error. So I'm going to count at zero. I'm going to count up by five. Okay, and I stop at 85. Now, when I go to graph my min, it's somewhere in between 0 and 5. 8.5 is somewhere in between 5 and 10. Median is in between 10 and 12. Q3 is on the other side of 15. And then I got my 80 all the way over there. Okay, I got a very lopsided box. So I'm going to connect the outer two on both sides. And then I put a box around the inside. Okay, again, on your box and whisker plot, you always have your min, your Q1, your median, your Q3, and your max. I don't need to label it every time. I label it the first time just to help you out. So let's find our outliers. If I'm starting with my Q1, I start with 8.5 minus 1.5 times IQR, Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. Okay, I'm going to plug that into my calculator. Negative 2.75. 27.25. Okay, so these two numbers created barriers that said that every single number from your original list must be in between those two numbers. So which one of these numbers is either too small or too big and falls outside of my range? And the answer is 80, okay? If you have more than one number that falls outside of that range, then you'd have more than one outlier. But in this one, we only have one. 80 because it is higher than 27.25. So that's my evidence, okay? Now I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to flip to the next page. Okay, the last example that I'm going to do for you with this video is example number three. I actually flipped a couple of pages. So you're going to get practice with a box and whisker plot, but before you get practice with it, I want to tell you that each part of the box and whisker plot represents 25% of the data. So the five-number summary gives me my boundaries. So if I'm reading this, I'm going to first figure out what each value I'm given is. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Each one of these counts by 1. So 5 is the min, because that's the first point. 6 is the Q1, because that's the second point. 10 is the median. 12 is Q3. And 15 is the max, because those are the five numbers that are always plotted on my box and whisker plot. So I've got those five points right there. Now, each part of this is going to be worth 25%. So the first part in between 5 and 6 is 25%. This middle box part from here to here is another 25%. The upper part of the box is another 25%. And then this outside whisker is 25%. Every single piece is worth 25%. So I'm talking about like all of the numbers that are less than 10 would be 50% because there's two pieces less than that. Any part that's bigger than 10 would be 50% because that's higher than that. So I'm going to answer these questions and then we'll be done. Okay, the lowest 25% would be the smallest part we would say would be between 5 and 6. The highest 25% would be the highest part. We'd say that's in between 12 and 15. The middle 50% would be the middle two parts, which would be the middle box. That would be in between 6 and 12. The bottom half would be below your median. The bottom two is 50% would be below 10. 75% of the data, so three pieces, is below 12. And 75% is above, three pieces is above six. So each piece is worth 25%, so you have to figure that out by counting by 25s. You need to finish the rest of this packet before tomorrow.